but go ahead. A fungible, take it away. All right, great. So um, today's 26 price num number report. And this is just something I showed last time, but I just added another company to the list. So we first started with Luna and then Celsius, then uh, three arrows capital went down. And then now the news of Voyager, I saw that yesterday. So just to give a briefing, the, the three arrows capital was a 10 billion assets under management company, which, you know, it was a darling of the bear market back then. And just when Voyager announced that they are under default because they gave, I think about, uh, I don't know, 21,000 Bitcoins or something and uh, 200 million US dollars in USDC. And they could not return it back. Therefore, they are in deep trouble. And then the shares went down by 40% for Voyager. And uh, once they announced that, they're going to stop the withdrawals. So yeah, this is what happened. And I think this is also, uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see more companies going forward in the coming days, uh, having this kind of a shit show um, with the customer's money. But I guess that's what this space is, not your keys, not your coins. So let me move ahead with what I'm going to discuss in this. The fear and greed index, as always, um, is at its lows. It's a nice lucky number, right, 11, in the last week, since the last week. And um, we are in really, um, you know, uh, we are closing in on the uh, end of the bottom of the bear market, but still we are, you know, in deep fear. And therefore, since there is a lot of fear, there is uh, less of demand going forward. And um, we are also hunting the bear market bottom. There was a uh, tweet that I saw on Twitter asking me that, hey, can you, in this price report, can you spot the exact bottom, exact price? And that's what I'm going to try to do in this report. Um, and also discuss some trends with Monero. I was able to get the blockchain data and uh, draw some uh, nice graph out of that. So I'm going to show that in the end. Uh, also, um, one of the things about uh, like marking the exact bottom is a, is a quite a difficult thing because over the past decade, several models, both technical and on-chain have been attempted to mark the exact bear market bottoms. But as the market evolves uh, with the market, uh, with the maturity and adoption, I think these models also diverge and they need adaptation uh, in some way or the other. But the only thing is uh, the euphoria and the, the fear in the market, that's a human psychology that never changes. So the very first thing that I'm going to show is uh, this chart basically covers almost everything that we need to see. This was uh, recently put out by Glassnode. So I tried to interpret this data. Um, so we have five models that you can see on screen, basically five lines. The black one that you see is the, uh, is the price uh, of Bitcoin. And uh, we're going to just interpret what these five lines are. So uh, just to give a briefing, the very first line that I'm talking about is the mayor multiple, uh, which is basically, uh, yeah, the 200 day moving average. Uh, and mayor multiple of 0.6 is what this uh, red line shows, which is over here. And um, what this is, is that uh, the prices trading 40% discount to the 200 day moving average. That's what this line shows. So if you're touching this line, it's basically 40% discount to the 200 day moving average. And this comes to around 23,500. So we are below this line. And the next one is the, the realized price. Uh, this is the uh, yellow line that you see here. And what this means is it's the aggregate cost basis of the current coin supply. Uh, in other words, is basically whenever uh, we move Bitcoins from one wallet to the other, we basically take the price at which the coins moved and average it across all the wallets. So that is the realized price for you. That stands about 22,500. And what this means is this also uh, marks pretty much close to the bottom historically of a bear market. And the third one is 200 week moving average, which is nothing but all the data points in, in the curve of which is the blue line we see over here. This is the 200 week moving average, which is every week we take the uh, price of Bitcoin and average it out 
over the last 200 days. So this is, everything is at about $22,000. So um, right now, the price of Bitcoin is lagging behind these three indicators. That is normal in a bear market. But we're going to jump to two other models, which have really not been broken, especially not the last one, which is the delta price, or it's also called the top cap. So the balance price is sitting around uh, 17,900. So we did briefly touch below this level, which is uh, the the gray, uh, the green one in this. We did touch below this level. It's basically, uh, it's a, let's say an experimental attempt at ca capturing the Bitcoin's fair valuation. Uh, and it's also called the long-term OG model, which is like, you know, the, the hodlers who have been there for several years or a decade they don't get shaken so this is the line indicating that it never has really gone below this or on a closing basis the so we are resort yeah the, the the hodlers resort basically and the last one is the delta price this is like the crucial crucial line this has never been broken historically so this is the purple line that you see here it's never been broken and what is the value of that line is 15750 so what does this top cap or delta cap mean? It's basically the, the realized price that is, I just talked about. And it's a, a difference between the realized price and the all time average price of Bitcoin. So we are talking about a really low level. So it's, it's the kind of like the all time average of all the prices accumulated in Bitcoin. So this stands about 15,000. So this has never gone below this price. Uh, his, in the history of Bitcoin bear markets uh, on a closing basis. So uh, talking about the bottom of Bitcoin, yes, sure, we can go to $8,000. But if we can close above $15,000 uh, on a closing basis, well, that's still amazing. This still doesn't, this still satisfies this constraint. So uh, things can change, certainly. But if you're talking about a bear market, I would say on a closing level, it's still about $15,000. Um, well, moving on, just give me a second. So I am going to talk about, this is also something that you can see, it's called a CVDD um, uh, ratio, which is pretty much the same as the top cap or the delta cap. And you can also see from this chart, you can just go to wubble.com and check out the charts there. Um, just a second, I think I'll keep it this way. So um, the next one is the on-chain of active addresses. Uh, this is a pretty interesting, uh, it gives a lot of insights uh, because as we know, during a bull market, uh, the, so what are active addresses? It's basically the, when coins moves from one wallet to the other, uh, as in, you know, sent and received whenever a wallet receives or sends Bitcoins, that is when an address becomes active. So during a bull phase, the number of active addresses increases, very logical. During a bear phase, people take a step back, sell, and they don't take interest in market. So during a bear market, the volatility of active addresses keeps increasing. So I want to just show one interesting point here. So if you see, this is like from a week ago, June 26, you see active addresses at 836,000 with a price point of 21,000. So if we go back into the history to find out active addresses of 836,000. So I'm just going to just go back uh, like far away. Uh, so 836, hmm. let's say over here, right? So this is a uh, 836. Um, it was during a bull market. You can see the price point here, sort of bull market. It was around in mid of 2019. Price point of 11,000. Everybody's excited and active addresses is 836. And fast forward today, it's bear market. Uh, it's at the end of the world, mm -hmm. double the price and still the same active addresses. So this speaks a lot about ad adoption in general. So it's it's something that we can interpret. So, um, and this one is uh, another interesting chart. It's the Bitcoin profitable days. So if you were to hold uh, this asset, uh, when could you buy it? To still be profitable so this was the green part is when you would have you could have still bought it and still be in profit 
So this is about uh, one and a half years ago. So currently the holding period is uh, still one and a half. Certainly if, if this price goes down, this can extend, but in general, uh, historically the like people holding coins are in profit if they hold for at least, let's say about two years of time period. And- Has um, gone lower than on that than ever before in terms of the years going back? Uh, I don't know, I have to see that, but it, it, in general, it's been like two years. It, mm -hmm. I think, uh, yeah, right now it is, I can only see what's right now. It's, it's one and a half years and we are at pretty much the low, lowest mm -hmm. point. So it's, plus minus, let's say two years. And uh, this is the, there's something I found uh, at Plan B's uh, account where he posted that we are at all time lows in RSI. And that is actually quite true. And this, the, the color of the dots is the, how much time is left towards the next halving. So we are still quite some time away, uh, but if you ask me, uh, we're going to stay around these levels because I don't see that kind of demand, the euphoria demand coming back. And certainly uh, I would see at some point us going back to test those 30,000 levels. I don't know when that happens, but uh, that would still be uh, a kind of escape route for a lot of miners who wants to sell off because as I mentioned last time, the electricity costs, um, so yeah, we might be in this 20, 30,000 range. Um, as far as technical tar charts is concerned, um, again, the RSI is, if we look at this, let me just, the RSI is at, yeah, um, the lowest, I think we have only seen this a few times in history, but if you see each and every uh, bear market has, different conditions or triggers that caused it. And you can't really estimate the hum humans, uh, you know, greed and uh, fear uh, per se. So uh, I, I would think that we're just going to, you know, flirt around these levels. It's going to be a dry, boring market for the time to come, not a trader's market. And uh, at some point, you know, we have to, we should go back up. And uh, coming to XMR USD, I, I'm, I'm not able to really, uh, frankly, interpret the data, but all I can say is like uh, the support of $120 is not hard enough. That is to say, um, you know, uh, if what I mean as a very hard support is that even if the market tumbles down, that's something that happened with Monero, I think in, in, the, in the past where we saw a nice pump when the whole market was going down, when it came from number 50 to number 30 uh, levels in the in the top 50 coins. I don't see that kind of a momentum playing out right now. So I'm still very skeptical and wary of this $120 because I see the next support as $80. So uh, it's a high probability that if Bitcoin, you know, were to capitulate in the coming days or show some weakness, uh, it might uh, induce some weakness in Monero and it tries to find the next best level of support where nothing shakes it, even if the whole world basically comes crashing down. Mm -hmm. So that is where I see this $80. And uh, this is a very interesting part because XMR BTC, XMR seems to be doing really well against Bitcoin. And it seems to be a strong buy uh, at this point. Um, but I think uh, if you ask me, it's uh, these $100 levels are pretty good long-term store of value uh, opportunity. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and I have one really one interesting part, which I talked about, about the blockchain. And uh, can you interpret this data for me, if possible? <laughs> this is the transactions. I don't know, you tell, what am I, hold on, I can barely see it. All right, so yeah, this that, transactions day going transactions per day going up. Yeah, exactly. So this is like the uh, the day since the inception of the blockchain, which yeah. is somewhere in uh, April fourteen, and this is the entire circle till today. That's cool. And okay. yeah, this is a linear scale that 
basically speaks about the transactions and you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's a lot of spikes and you can't really see too much out of this however uh let me see however this data is pretty interesting because i just drew this and i was a little uh surprised seeing this so neat this mm -hmm. is the transaction in the logarithmic scale okay so we started with something less and uh, you don't see these circles but there should also be circles i'll try to draw them and post it on my twitter so uh yeah this is a very good interpretation of this data in my opinion and it's going towards hundred thousand at some point in time mm -hmm. so i think it in let's say a couple of years we might see that kind of number nice organic growth nice organic growth because it kind of smoothens out all the noise from the data what, what, what would bitcoins look like in comparison that's a good point i'm i'm let me also do that and let me present it next time with the yeah. bitcoins transaction that will also be interesting but it's it's been it's been pretty dry with bitcoin i would say on at least on the layer one because i think now people for transactions people are slowly moving on to layer two lightning so I, yeah, ideally, yeah. When, you, when you zoom out on bitcoin's transactions and you look at them versus monero i mean it looks like <laughs> bitcoin leveled out and is going down a little bit monero just continuously trending up in terms of transactions yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I think this also um, uh, takes into account any statistical attacks and other vectors. You know, people that attack the network, the transaction certainly shoots up. But this is like an organic growth over time. So we can kind of any, trust any predictions when we pass Bitcoin in terms of transaction count? Um, I think the last time I saw Bitcoin's transactions, uh, it was quite high. I think it was like uh, seven hundred thousand every day. Uh, right now we are at, I think we're at like ten percent, right? We're at like ten percent. We're like five, five, six, six percent, I guess. Oh, okay, I because, thought we were at ten percent at one point. Uh, could be. I'll have to check the data. Um, um, yeah, I think we were like eight or nine percent. Okay. At some point. So uh, when does it pass? I think it all depends on the adoption. Uh, and also the price because uh, you know the transactions and price are some way correlated in a very mysterious way so uh, we'll have to wait, wait and watch but i would say uh, two years might be a good time horizon to uh, to revisit this all right yep that's all for my side today I mean, so what do you think just big picture wise? Obviously, the, this bear market is just different than any other one we've been through with with Bitcoin, with crypto, uh, with Bitcoin in particular, obviously, being the old, oldest one. We've never been in an environment where, you know, interest rates are are going up, really. Right. Bitcoin has always kind of benefited from from the good times where money was flowing. People had money was cheap and people were looking to, to put it into something. It's never really been tested on, under this scenario where it theoretically, you know, I, I guess, you know, it makes sense. It's acting in this way, right? Um, because money, um, money is cheap. But so on a macro level, I mean, how, do you see that affecting the, you know, Bitcoin market in a larger way, causing it to maybe not act as it normally does in a bear market, perhaps making it a worse than usual bear market? Yeah, uh, well, I would say uh, to look at an, a different perspective, the, the very reason Bitcoin was created was because of the 2008 financial crisis, if I might say that. Mm -hmm. And this is a test for Bitcoins, you know, uh, all the narratives it's played down in the last uh, 10 years. It's a test for that. And um, I think I, I would just put it this way. The human psychology in this whole cryptocurrency market is running on greed in a way. Right. Mm -hmm. So where does the greed come back? I mean, does it come back when Bitcoin goes to 15,000? It does it come back at 10,000. So so that is something that we have to watch. But I think the whole macro scale, um, you know, people are. Uh, I guess you know, my question is, if, if the Dow keeps, you know, if the, the general market keeps going down, does Bitcoin at some point untether and start going up or is it going to continue to get pulled down by the rest of the market? I, I would say it will get pulled down for, uh, with the rest of the market. However, it might find its own level and, you know, be dry for a very long time. That is to say, let's say the market goes down by another 30%. Bitcoin is around flirting around 15,000 and finds its floor and just going to be there. Uh, but a lot of... Mm -hmm. 
see a potential scenario where um, the sell-off in Bitcoin almost ex- starts to accelerate because the narrative of store of value starts to deteriorate. So, like, if if Bitcoin just continues to trend down as the market trends down, that it's it's continuously proving it's not a good store, like it's not a better store of value than other things. So, sure, is, is that then a road? Um, you know. Tr- trust in it as a store of value and people start selling on that saying you know what maybe bitcoin isn't a good store of value and then that kind of propels it down further yeah you see I, I, the, yeah i think the potential scenario i might see with this is when all the models that you know has defined bitcoin so far breaks down and i think that model comes around fifteen thousand dollars so uh, technically speaking if that doesn't hold and you know we just stay below that for let's say a week then I think people are really going to question what is the next model that we can predict the price of Bitcoin on. So I think that's a very precarious scenario. What are, um, what are we sitting at right now? We're sitting at like 19 right now, 20? I think 19, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so we're really currently in uncharted waters right now, right? Because I mean, Bitcoin, when was the last time Bitcoin went lower in a bear market than its previous high? Right? That's that hasn't been since what, yeah. the, the 20th. That hasn't. I mean, even um, touching the previous all time highs, uh, you know, in the next bear market, that even has been hasn't been the case because uh, in the previous bear market, I think we touched something like two thousand eight hundred or three thousand. Right. But the previous market's bear market high was like thousand one hundred. Yeah. So, but yeah. but this time we broke the know, previous all time high. It's uncharted, uncharted water, right? Or I guess in the past <laughs> we've. Have we never, have we always never broken through the previous all-time high? Or no, there's been times when we have, right? Like way back? Or no? um, it could be way back, but the thing is uh, we can't really um, trust the data from 2011, 12 uh, bull and yeah. bear markets. Uh, and one more thing, very important thing to point out is uh, I also checked the active addresses. Um, like in terms of accumulation of Bitcoins, uh, well, I'm, when I'm talking about Bitcoin, it's the overall crypto market in general. So um, there has been a lot of addition of uh, people in the wallets at having less than one Bitcoin. So th- those addresses have actually blown up in the last few weeks. And also like the whale addresses holding more than 10,000 Bitcoins uh, that have also kind of blown up. So, um, so that is something that uh, people like the money is moving to something like spot money from, uh, from hodlers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. B- uh, Night Nightmare is saying BTC is going to 8K. Monero is going to forty dollars. All right. Yeah, if the eighty dollars breaks, throw, throw everybody throw your estimate at what you think the, the Bitcoin bottom will be and the Monero bottom. <laughs> it is fun to watch. I gotta say, maybe it's the I don't know. I find I find it entertaining. These these extreme moments, whether it's like going up at a at an accelerating rate or you know. Uh, these bear markets it is it's it's fun being on the roller coaster right if i'm yeah, but being, being on the roller coaster i i think i'm enjoying it uh, however cash is king at this time to be honest i mean if it goes down you need some cash to to buy the dip right so yeah, uh definitely. it does help that does help and you become a bottom chaser though right you got the cash <laughs> but you, you don't know when to to go in right oh uh, well um on that end well, I would say that when the whole environment is fearful, people are talking about the world ending tomorrow. I think that is when I'm starting to get in. Yeah, I think you you made a post asking where where do you think we are on the uh, emotional chart, right? Uh, you know, pain, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. And people where, were like panic. That's what most yeah. of them said. Where, where do you think we are? on that chart um I, I don't know what was after panic it was uh b- b- there was something else before panic yeah, between yeah, panic yeah. and capitulation yeah. yeah i think we are somewhere in between panic and capitulation oh wow i don't know i think we're a little further up i don't think i i don't really sense the 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 strong fear in the air but i think I oh think you think you're for, we're further up um uh, yeah that could be i, I would we say are. I mean, I think you need like a Michael Saylor to get rattled, you know? I think you need like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, I think all, all, all like the, the kind of noobish Michael Saylor people need to get completely like rattled. I mean, a lot of them are, a lot of people are underwater, but I don't know. 
I think I think what I could uh, say about Michael Saylor uh, uh, is from all the data I have about him is like he's not going to get rattled uh, <laughs> until three thousand dollars. I think he will just you know bankrupt himself, but he's not going to sell his Bitcoin. I think that no, he's, yeah, he's into he's into he's all in, right? So he, he's a different league, probably. Yeah. So as long as he's in, I think the other uh, OGs would be as well, you know, yeah. in because Michael Saylor has not sold yet. So. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like you said, it's it's really going to come down to the point at which big, there's a group of Bitcoiners that are holding all the Bitcoin that no longer want to sell. So that that yeah. that is the bottom, right? Uh, what that number is, who knows? Yeah. I, I think I think finally I would just say this: uh, it's going to be. Um, the on-chain analysis plus the technical chart analysis plus the macroeconomic uh, feel of you know how pessimistic it is. I think that is all these three factors together are going to define the bottom. But everything else is a speculation. When somebody says it's going to you know ten dollars or twenty dollars, I think that is just a feeling, and I, I don't think I, I need, I'm going to believe that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fungible, thank, thank you so you. much, thank man. Thank you for joining. Thank us. you. Yep, greatly appreciate it.